जय राधमाधव कुंजा बिहारी जय राधमाधव कुंजा बिहारी गोपी जानवाला गिरिवार जय गोपी जानवाला गिरिवार यशोदनांदना ब्रज जान रंधना यशोदनांदना यमुना चीरा वन चारे जय राधमाधव कुंजा बिहारे जय राधमाधव कुंजा बिहारे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Tulsi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Iskan Founder Charya Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramhamsa Pravika Charya Astra Sarshi Srimad, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai, Namacharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Seko Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadar Har Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopana Samakun Radhakun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Yamuna Mai Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Ki Jai, Anantakoti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaura Pemanande. <coughs> All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. All glories to the Prabhupada. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Chaiva Narottamam. Devim Saraswatum Vyasam. Tato Jayam Yardayet. Nasta Praishu Badreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavat Uttama Shloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This morning we'll be reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 7, Chapter 7, Text 24. Anvaya Tya Vyatarekena Vivikeno Shatatmana Swargastana Samam Nayar Vim Shri Vim Rishadibir Asatvarai Anvaya Vyatarekena Vivekena Shatamanmana Swargastana Samanyayar Vim Rishabir Asatvarihai Anvaya Vyatarekena Vivekena Shatatmana Swargastana Samam Nayar Vimri Shadbir Asadvarai Anvaya Vyatikena Vivekena Shatatmana Swargastana Samam Nayar Vimshri Dadbir Asadvarai
Anyone else? Okay. Anvaya directly. Via Terekena and indirectly. Vivekena by mature discrimination. Vushata purified. Atmana with the mind. Swarga creation. Stana maintenance. Samamnayai with destruction. Virmishabadihi by those making a serious analysis. Asadvarai very sober. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Sober and expert persons should search for the spirit soul with minds purified through analytical study in terms of the soul's connection with and distinction from all things that undergo creation, maintenance, <coughs> and destruction. Purport. A sober person can study himself and distinguish the soul from the body by analytical study. For example, when one considers his body, his head, his hands, and so on, one can certainly understand the difference between the spirit and soul, the spirit soul and the body. No one says, I head. Everyone says, my head. Thus, there are two entities, the head and I. They are not identical, although they appear to be one conglomeration. One may argue, when we analyze the body, we find a head, hands, legs, a belly, blood, bones, urine, stool, and so on. But after everything is considered, where is the existence of the soul? A sober man, however, avails himself of this Vedic instruction. Yato vai mani bhutani jayanti yena jatani vijivanti yad prayanti abhisam vishanti tad vijakya sasva tad brahmati from the tri triya upanishad 311 thus he can understand that the head hands legs and indeed the entire body has grown on the basis of the soul if the soul is within the body head hands and legs grow but otherwise they do not a dead child does not grow up for the ch for the soul is not present if by a careful analysis of the body one still cannot find the existence of the soul, this is due to his ignorance. How can a gross man fully engaged in materialistic activities understand the soul, which is a small particle of spirit, one ten thousandth the size of the tip of a hair? Where such a person foolishly thinks that the material body has grown from a combination of chemicals, although he cannot find them. The Vedas inform us, however, that chemical combinations do not constitute the living force. The living force is the Atma and Paramatma, and the body grows on the basis of that living force. The fruit of a tree grows and undergoes six changes, kinds of changes because of the presence of the tree. If there were no tree, there could be no question of the growth and maturity of fruit. Therefore, beyond the existence of the body are the Paramatma and Atma within the body. This is the first understanding of spiritual knowledge explained in Bhagavad Gita. The body exists because of the presence of the Supreme Lord and the Jiva, which is part of the Lord. This is further explained by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita 9.4. Mayatata midam sarvam jagad av yakta mortena matstani sarva bhutani nachaham teshu avashtiti vishtita. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. The Supreme Soul exists everywhere. The Vedas enjoin Sarvam Kalavidam Brahma. Everything is Brahman, or an expansion of Brahman's energies. Sutri Mani Gana Eva. Everything rests on the Lord, just like pearls string together on a thread. The thread is the principal Brahman. He is the Supreme Cause, the Supreme Lord, who, upon whom everything rests. Mataparataram nanyat. 
Thus we must study the Atma and Paramatma, the individual soul and the super soul, upon whom the entire material cosmic manifestation rests. This is explained by the Vedic statement, Yato va imani bhutani jayanti yena jatani jivanti. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantigam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavinishvari Vishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hare Pri Vancha Kaupatri Bhishcha Kripasana Bhivacha Patitanam Pavini Bhyo Vaishna Bhyo Namonamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadad Hara Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> So yesterday, at the Christian Lounge, Balaram Prabhu, he read this verse from the Bhagavad Gita. What is nigh for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled. And the time of awakening is nigh for the introspective, introspective sage. And Balaram Prabhu is making the point that the materialists, they can't understand the devotees. And the devotees, we don't understand the materialists. Srila Prabhupada, he would explain that real intelligence means to understand the difference between matter and spirit. When you go out on book distribution, you ask this question, what is the difference between matter and spirit? And people tell you um, their ideas, but they can understand when one is temporary and one is eternal, one is permanent. And in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, Says Prayenal Paisaha Sabya Kalawasmi Nyugejana Manda Sumanda Matayo Manda Bhagyahi Padrutaha. In this Iron Age of Kali, men almost have short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, and above all, always disturbed. You, if you want to get people to the table, you use one word <laughs> stress. <laughs> I was uh, distributing books yesterday, and there was a group of students. I guess they're on uh, summer vacation or something. Spring vacation? Spring break. Spring break. And I was asking them, what grade are you guys in? And they were telling me they were juniors in high school. So I asked them, have you heard of stress? And they said, yeah, we have a lot of stress. We have exams coming up, this and that. So the group that I was speaking with, I was teaching them about um, the Bhagavad Gita, and how it can help them in their life. And how their path can be resolute in a purpose, and not many branched, like what Krishna says. And then they like that, because I told them that as you grow older, there's going to be a lot of paths that are open to you, but some of them are a waste of time. So long story short, I usually do this. I give one a set, another one a set, and then another one another set. And surprisingly, these three sets went out and asked for a donation. And then they said, you know, we're uh, college, uh, high school students, so we don't have that much money. So I said, give whatever you can. So one gave 10, one gave another 10, and then the other one gave $15. So I was appreciating how they understood the importance of Srila Prabhupada's books. And I also told them that um, the first understanding of spiritual life is that you're not the body. And, you know, the way Kali Yuga is progressing, everyone is trying to make their body very beautiful. They spend so much hours at the gym, they decorate it. And <clears throat> they don't understand that it's temporary. Imagine spending so much money 
energy on something that's bound to uh, be destroyed one day. It may be 10 minutes, a year, so and so. And so here Prahlad Maharaj's instructions to his father and his schoolmates, I noticed that they go from gross to subtle. The first thing he tells his father is that anyone who accepted a material body and temporary household life has fallen to a dark well. But not only a well, but Prahlad Maharaj says there's no water. So imagine that. And then he compares um, materialistic household life to a, a silkworm creating a cocoon for itself. The silkworm creates this nice environment, you know. And, <laughs> and then it can't get out. It's stuck there. And Srila Prabhupada, he says, how can someone who is bound liberate himself, free himself? And Dravida Prabhu, he always makes this uh, statement that the silkworm, they get boiled in water. And then they take the silkworm out of the cocoon and then they use that for making silk cloth. And then uh, Prahlad Maharaj, he tells him that this body is very rare, but it's easily available because the soul transmigrates from one body to another. And in the Padma Purana, it describes there are 8,400,000 species of life. And the soul is the most rare because we can understand spiritual topics. And we can break free from this cycle, this samsara of birth and death. And in comparison, um, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Sanatana Goswami, whenever he would see uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu would embrace him, even with all these sores on his body. And it's described that there's foul-smelling, uh, you know, liquid coming out of his body. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was always eager to embrace Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami, he was very embarrassed because of this. The Supreme Lord embracing you, and you have all these um, skin disease. <clears throat> but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says, the stool and urine of the maintained child appear like sandalwood pulp to the mother. Similarly, when the foul moisture oozing from the sores of Sanatan Goswami, Sanatan touches my body, I have no hatred for them. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Sanatan Goswami is one of the associates of Krishna. There could not be any bad odor from the body. On the first day I embraced him, I smelled the aroma of chachu shama, a mixture of sandalwood pulp, camphor, a guru, and musk. This is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu smelled on the body of Sanatan Goswami. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says that the body of a devotee is never material. It is considered to be transcendental, full of spiritual bliss. And in the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada, he writes, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is trying to convince Haridas Thakur and Sanatana Goswami that a devotee whose life is dedicated to the service of the Lord is never in the material conception. Because he always engages in the service of the Lord, his body is transcendental and full of spiritual bliss. So we should never consider devotional service to be material. And when we have that mentality, it becomes mundane. And then we commit offenses, <clears throat> offenses to devotees, to the holy name, to the deities. And then Prahlad Maharaj moves on to friends and, uh, friends and enemies. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Pandita Samadarshana, that a, some, a humble sage by true knowledge sees with equal vision a cow, a brahmana, a dog and a dog eater, uh, the same. But Srila Prabhupada, he explains that they do not see any living uh, entity as an enemy or friend. Instead, with broader vision, they see everyone as a servant of God, Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. And then Prahlad Maharaj, he explains that due to uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to materialistic life 
make progress towards hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that has, which has already been chewed. I was telling Duja money about sugar cane. And last year when I went to India, it was very sweet. Who has tasted sugar cane here? Yeah, okay. So I'm sorry I forgot to bring, <laughs> I told Duija money that I was supposed to bring one for him, but I ran out of time. I was gonna bring it the last day, but Maharaj was not feeling well, so I, I didn't have time. But sugar cane, you chew it, you know, the juice is very sweet. You chew it and you chew it, and then <laughs> the taste goes away. And then you spit that on the floor, at the, not on the floor, but on the trash. And then imagine someone picking it up and chews that same uh, sugar cane. Not only is, is it disgusting, but there's no taste in it. But that's what people are doing in materialistic life. They're chewing the chewed. They're working hard day and night. And for temporary um, benedictions or goals. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that those whose minds are attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for this devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. So they're too busy, and when you ask them to you know, come to the temple, they don't have time for it. I was distributing books yesterday, and someone told me that I don't have time. So I said, give me one minute. And this person came back, and I said, you know, these books, they're very patient. <laughs> and then he smiled, and I said, it may take a month, it may take a few months, it may take a year, but this book will always be waiting for you. And then he, he appreciated that. And I said, look at your family, <laughs> they're leaving you, you know, they're impatient. They don't have uh, time to wait for you. And I said, but these books, they can always be with you. And I told him that these books, they teach spiritual knowledge. The difference between uh, the body, the soul, and what is our purpose in life. And so he looked back at his family. His family didn't even wait for him. He, they just kept walking. So he said, how much do you want for the book? And I said, you can give whatever you can. He reached in his pocket and he gave a nice donation. So I gave him a stack, and I also gave him Bhagavad Gita. And then he said, I've been seeing this uh, book everywhere, Bhagavad Gita. And I said, it's a sign. It's a sign for you to get one and read it. So he shook my hand, and he uh, went to get his family. And so endeavors for sense gratification or material happiness through ec economic development they shouldn't be performed at all. They're a waste of time, energy. Because everything is due to our karma. Um, we are given a certain amount of um, sense gratification, and also we're going to suffer from our past misdeeds. When I learned about karma, it just made sense, you know. I was always, as a child, I was thinking, why are there children that are born deformed, you know? And then why are there people with nice bodies, normal bodies? And then my mother, she taught me, whenever you see someone that has a disability, don't look at them strangely or don't make fun of them, you know. And then she said, uh, maybe in your next life you may have a body like that. So my mom was preaching to me somewhat. So I always took that seriously. And whenever I see someone with a so-called disability, I just feel sorry for them. And a lot of people, they're wasting a lot of time. But the Bhagavatam says, both by rising and setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. So we have Srimad Bhagavatam class, we have Bhagavad Gita, we have the Krishna Lounge, we have Harinam. We're utilizing our time properly in the service of Krishna. And then Pallad Maharaj, he talks about the duration of life for human beings. Uh, most we have 100 years, and then half of that is spent sleeping. And then in childhood, we spent 10 years in bewilderment. <laughs> 
And then <clears throat> as we grow older, one passes another 10 years engaged in sports and playing. And then when we are old, um, Prabhupada says another 20 years is wasted uh, in that way. So time is very important. We should utilize time. Uh, Krishna says that um, I'm time, all devouring uh, in this world. And so we should understand that time is also Krishna. It's a representation of Krishna. And we should see it as something to... Um, we shouldn't waste any second. And then... Now, Prahlad Maharaj, he goes into subtle things now. The eight energies of Krishna and then the 26 elements like that. And so you can see the progression of gross to subtle. And Srila Prabhupada, he mentions that when he says separated energies, Srila Prabhupada uses this example. He speaks through a tape recorder. And then if he is not present and when someone applies a tape recorder, his energy is still there, but it's separated from him. And so I like the analogy. Krishna is always maintaining this world, but he's also aloof from it. And then Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that this material world is working under his direction. <clears throat> and then Prabhupada he calls this, uh, this verse self-study or self-analysis. And he says there's two souls in the body, the individual soul and the super soul. I was, I was at my table and there was this Mataji. She came to my table very enthusiastically. She started asking questions and then for some reason she knew Krishna. And I knew this was a red flag. <laughs> so long story short, she asked me, where is Krishna? I said, Krishna is in your heart. And then that's, that was when she revealed her true colors. She says, no, 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 Krishna is not in my heart. You know, I said, why not? And she says, the only person that's there is Jesus Christ. And I said, oh, that's wonderful. And then she said, how can you force, if you, how do you worship a God who forces himself into your heart? And I was trying to explain to her that the soul is part and parcel of Krishna. It's, it's, Krishna is already there from the very beginning, but she was very, <laughs> she was very adverse to uh, understanding this. And then she walked away very angrily. She said, Krishna is not in my heart. You know? So I just smiled. And for newcomers to Krishna Lounge or the Sunday feast, when you ask them, who are you? They give you their name, their age, their gender, and so on. They identify with the body. And Prabhupada calls this a vidya, or ignorance, or a misconception of their true identities. <coughs> but a devotee, after hearing lectures and association, we can begin to realize that actually, I don't want to be this body. And in the purport, Prabhupada says, blood, bones, urine, and stool. Sankarsana, do you want to be blood, urine, and stool? Yeah. So we don't identify with this gross material body. We identify ourselves as servants of Krishna. Jivera Shuru Poi Krishnera Nichadas. That by constitution, uh, our constitutional position is to be an eternal servant of Krishna. Prabhupada tells the story of the organs. They have a meeting and they work so hard and they say, why are we working day and night? And the stomach, it just it's, it doesn't do anything. So they protest. They don't do their work. And then after a few days, they become weak. And then they have another meeting. They say, what's going on? <laughs> you know. And then they understand that by supplying food to the stomach, they themselves get energized. They get nourishment. So similarly, by serving Krishna, we ourself, the soul, becomes nourished. And Prabhupada, he would always say to make the use of a bad bargain. And the bad bargain is this material body. So I'll share a few uh, stories. In the CC, there was a Bengali poet, and he wanted to share his poem 
And then he was making the statement that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's a supreme personality of Godhead, but he entered the body of Jagannath and created uh, life in it. And then, um, what is it called? Ramananda Roy, he chastised this Bengali poet. He said, you call yourself a poet, but you're making an offense. You're making a difference between Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath. And then he tells him that the deity and Krishna are not different from himself. So he advised him, he said, you should read more and you should listen from a real devotee. And then there's a saying that, let me see, Arche Vishnu Shiladir Guru Su Nara Matir Vaishnave Jati Budi Yasya Va Naraki Saha. And it means that person is a resident of hell who considers the deity worshipped in the temple to be stone or wood, who considers the spiritual master an ordinary man, and who thinks that the body of a Vaishnav fully dedicated to the service of the Lord belongs to the material modes of nature. So that's a very bold and heavy statement. How many people think that we're worshipping an idol or stone? So Krishna, so it says that they're residents of hell. So we should try to save them or inform them. And I'll say a few things. So as we advance in devotional service, we should develop this mood of gratitude in bhakti. At every step in our spiritual life, there's always someone who has inspired us, helped us, and directed us. A devotee notes every instance where someone has helped them advance in Krishna consciousness, whether it's learning an instrument, learning to distribute books, learning to cook, learning to sing, learning to pick tulsi leaves, whatever little contribution someone has made, we should show our appreciation and gratitude. And this creates opportunities to serve more. It opens the door to new friendships and it develops an atmosphere of camaraderie. So we should make an effort and to let that person know that we appreciate what they've done for us. And it checks our uh, false ego. And so, okay. So, I was, uh, yesterday I was at Bobo Park and there was this person that came to my table. He said, you know, I used to be an atheist, but now I'm open-minded to religion. So I told him about the Bhagavad Gita. And I said, this book teaches the science of God. And so he said, science of God, that's an interesting statement. Um, I said, yeah, it's a very scientific way, a systematic way to understand our relationship with God. And then he said, tell me more about our religion. And I told him, religion is very simple. It means to love and to understand God. And they said, I like that. And I said, please take this book. I told him, you're a very thoughtful and intelligent person. You should utilize that to read, uh, reading this book. And he smiled and said, you know, you, you speak very nicely <laughs> with these books. And I told him, we're not here to convert people. We want to add more knowledge to what they already have. So he gave a donation and he walked away. And I was, as I was speaking to someone else, he came back and he said, it's okay if I take another book. I have another atheistic friend and I think we should study this together. <laughs> so I said, of course. So he gave another donation and he took another Bhagavad Gita and I gave him a, a brown paper bag for it. There was this family, they, as they were walking, they pointed at our Farsi books. And then the grandmother, she was so excited. She said, look, you know, she said, look, look, you know, Farsi, Farsi, like that. So I said, what does this mean? And then she said, perfect questions, perfect answers. I said, would you like to read about that? <laughs> and the grandmother looked at her granddaughter and daughter and said, I want to get this book. So I said, I have another book, Easy Journey to Other Planets in Farsi. And she was so, so happy. And as they were taking the book, she whispered something to the granddaughter. And then the granddaughter came to me and she said, is it okay if we take a picture with you? So they all, they were behind me and I was folding my hands. 
And then as they were taking a picture, the grandmother said, uh, thank, thank him for being here and having these books in our language. So I really appreciated um, all the devotees who translated our books in, in the different languages. I actually met uh, Satya Raj Prabhu in Mayapur. I guess he's the one responsible for the... Hmm? Satya Naran, yeah. And then, so I met him there. And then so, uh, yeah, he was telling me how Bhakta Kevin in L.A., he's doing huge with uh, uh, Eastern or Middle East uh, languages. And, yeah. So, and he said, you should uh, contact him. And I said, yeah, I've been getting a lot of good feedback from people that speak Arabic and Farsi. So that was one uh, encounter. And then there was, a, I'll end with this. There's a homeless man. He looks very tired. He's always sweating. He walks from, you know, wherever he's working to his uh, shelter or whatever. And every time he comes to my table, he says, give me a word of the day. So I, first time I told him the word, the word Nam. He said, what does that mean? It says name. And they said, what's significance about that? And I said, we chant the holy name of God. And they said, I like that. And as he was uh, leaving, he said, Nam. <laughs> so yesterday, he came to my table and he said, I have good news. I've been approved to get a housing like that. And I said, you're a very nice person. I see him every day. He touches his head to the walls of um, the hallway. You know, he's very mean and... Uh, Menial like that, very, uh, what's the right word, humble. And then so he said, give me a, a new word for today, something that will give me life. I said, pray, Ma. <laughs> and they said, what does that mean? And I said, love of God. And they said, love. And you, you see his eyes just grow, you know, love of God. And then, and then he said, pray, Ma. How do you spell it? And I said, P-R-E-M-A. And then he kept repeating it, Prema, Prema. And I asked him, do you know how to develop your love of God? And then he said, no. And I said, Hari Nam. It's all that word again. And then so I told him by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I said, you can develop Prema. <laughs> and they kept chanting this, Prema, Hare Krishna, Prema, <laughs> as he was leaving. And then, so I was just smiling, you know. Little things that the devotees do, we try to help uh, the conditioned souls as, as much as we can. Okay, um, thank you for listening. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, 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 one, se one, se one second, just, just give me 15, 20 seconds. Yes, sir. So this verse you cited... Ayu Haradi Vaipung Sam Udyanastanyata Yachino Nita Uttama Shloka Bhartiya. Very famous verse. Uh, the, the sun takes away the life, rising and setting sun, except those who use their time for glorifying Krishna. And I always wondered about that. I wanted to find out because my in other other places you read the word chana and it means moment. Moment. But here Prabhupada translated as you use your time, you know, which is of course perfect. So I looked up, and in, in, uh, I have another translation here of the, Gita, of the Bhagavatam, and also the commentary by Banaswami. You know, he, he, he translated Vishnu Chakrabarti's commentary for the whole book. So another way of understanding that is <laughs> his translation. The, the, the rising and setting of the sun takes away the life of everyone except for one who uses even one moment mm. in, in glorifying the Lord. And that last story just... <laughs> <laughs> struck it. He is now he's you know he's he's taking the holy name and he, yeah. I don't know. so that's very and what that what that does it, it reminded me of another verse in the Bhagavatam in the sixth canto. I think I've mentioned this one before. This is part of the prayers of Chitraketu when he has a revelation of Sankrishan and he offers these prayers. And he, and he, and he mentions there that one who simply because there's so many verses about it, if you just chant one name you know you get so much so much karma you know but here it says if you just hear one name mm. so this is an impetus for doing exactly what you're doing you know you're meeting people out there and and and, and someone like this is amazing he's glorifying krishna even if he just does it a little bit it's so beneficial mm -hmm. so that's that's uh, that's all i wanted to share the other understanding of that verse
Thank you, Dragon Fruit. The same uh, homeless man, he shook my hand. He's, he's clean, actually. He's, he's not, you know, unclean or dirty. And he shook my hand and said, you know, thanks to people like you, you encouraged me to do better in life. And I didn't want to get into it with him, but he said, um, you know, he fell into drinking like that. But he picked himself up, and then every day he tries to meet people that are uplifting, positive. So he, uh, you know, he appreciated my, uh, whatever I can give him. Yes, we are trying to... Kishnan, thank you for the class. Uh, please uh, tell us something uh, from your last visit, Maipur. <clears throat> so those who have not noticed, I'm insignificant. But I was in Mayapur for uh, 15 days with uh, my spiritual master, His Holiness Bhadrin Ran Swami Maharaj. And one thing I can tell you is that after the Mongol RT, the morning program, I go to Prabhupada Samadhi. And it's so, it, it's, it's grand, amazing. It's like you feel the potency in it. So while I was there, every time I had a chance to go to the Samadhi, I would chant at least 30 rounds. And those rounds, I can guarantee they're the best attentive and most ecstatic uh, rounds I've ever felt. And so when you go to Mayapur, uh, visit Srila Prabhupada Samadhi, you can see the work, you can see the, the love that they put in it for Srila Prabhupada. Yes. How did that, how did that uh, building get built? You know, how did it manifest? So the history is that, of course, Prabhupada is in, in you know, his samadhi is right there in Vrindavan, in, in the, near Vrindavan, at the front of the Vrindavan temple. Mm -hmm. But due to Maya, you know, uh, that samadhi wasn't getting built right after, you know, Prabhupada disappeared. It was the era of the new gurus and everything, and it was, it was there wasn't enough support for doing that, which is kind of scandalous. But so Ambarish himself, he he paid entirely for that 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 samadhi mm. in in Mayapur, and it was designed by and I forget his name now. The names he, he was a devotee, a proper disciple, was an Italian devotee, and he was an architect. And that's why it kind of looks like the uh, Vatican or something. You know, there's, there's certain, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but it's, uh, it's, it's very inspiring. And one thing I didn't know until years after it was built, that there's a whole theater under there. I don't know if you, you visited that. There's a theater under there. And I w we had a program, Bhakti Mark Swami, and there was a, a, a play one year that I went there. It was very wonderful. But that, that, that samadhi, as, as you said, is very, very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And it, it really kind of uplifted the whole movement when it appeared like that. Yeah. And, I, and I, just one final little uh, note, I can't resist this one. I, <laughs> I was in the air, because uh, Prabhupada asked all of his disciples to come, you know. And I'm, I'm in L.A. in 1977, and we're working on the SSR. It hadn't been printed yet. And we wanted to get it to the printer before Prabhupada left his body so we could say, Prabhupada, this is at the printer, and, and we were able to do that. So I couldn't leave. I couldn't take the, I didn't have any money, but they, they wouldn't send me. So finally, and I was writing the captions to all the paintings, uh, pictures. So finally we were able to leave. It was like the 12th of November, you know. And uh, we're on our way from L.A. by the eastern route, going to U.K. and, and, and uh, you know, uh, London, and then there to go to Delhi. And there was a bomb scare on the plane. And when we landed, we didn't land in Heathrow. We landed in, in uh, some little airport in uh, Ireland or something. And uh, the whole day they spent combing that plane, you know, for trying to find a bomb. There was no bomb. But we missed our connection. We ended up arriving, I think, on the 15th. And as soon as we got to Bombay, you know, we, which we were going to take the train to Delhi, a devotee came. He couldn't even speak. He showed us a telegram. Probably had disappeared on the previous day, you know. So we made our way there. So I was working for BTG, 
and I had another mission in, in, in India. You know, I, so I was there for the, for the Disappearance Festival for Prabhupada. It was very inspiring. Then I flew to Mayapur, and one of the things I did, I had, I had uh, some um, flowers from the garland that Prabhupada was wearing, mm -hmm. which would then go uh, in, the, in the spot that would then rise it was up at the Samadhi. It is called the Pushma, Pushpa Samadhi. You know? mm -hmm. So we put that uh, there, and then I went and uh, I did some other things. But uh, that, that samadhi is always a high point of my you know, visit to Mayapur. So thank you for reminding me. You know, everyone's chanting there nicely, you know. Everyone's circumambulating Shiloh Prabhupada. Now we're just there, it's amazed, you know. And when, there's, when the sun comes up, you look up and then you see the Sankirtan, uh, what is it called? Devotees, you know, one's playing Haranam, one's playing Kartal. So... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is very special. Um, we shouldn't take it very cheaply. Yes, uh, Thank you for the class, Prabhu. Um, you mentioning this person who was walking uh, in, in the hallways and touching the, the walls. Yeah. How, how did he do that? Just touching the walls silently and passing by? There's pillars, and then, you know, I guess there's like descriptions of, you know, what this building or monument is for. And every time he would pass uh, the old globe, he would look at this pillar, and he would just touch it, and then he would put his head on it, you know, <laughs> like that. So I, I saw a little bit of, um, what's the right word? Um, humility, you know, because nobody does that, you know, puts their head on a pillar. So I, I really enjoyed talking to this guy too, you know. I can tell he's a hard worker. It's just, you know, like, Due to a maybe bad association or past habits, you know, he fell down and then he's trying to rise back up. Thank you. I, the question I had was um, related to humility because I noticed there's a difference between material and spiritual humility. And I'm wondering if you could explain that a little bit. For instance, how do devotees express humility when it comes to kirtan? Okay. Um, I think it's Jayad Veta Swami's book. It, it came out, it's called um, Learning the Standards of Kirtan or something like that. that yeah, they gave one to Maharaj. They were giving it out. And then so the devotee was explaining it's actually the etiquette of the devotees, you know. Just like I heard in Kirtan, um, the person leading whatever instrument he has should be the loudest. And the person that's uh, playing, they should play a little bit softer, you know, something like that. So similarly, we should, humility means that we're servants of other servants of servants. Das, das, anu, das. And with that mindset, we'll always remain humble, you know. That's what I always think, you know. And also, uh, Maharaj, he gave a presentation, so there's a difference between low self-esteem and spiritual humility, you know. And Maharaj was explaining that, you know, humility doesn't mean to be like a, a doorstop. You know, everyone walks, you let everyone walk um, on you. Doormat. Doormat, sorry. Yeah. Where well, you try to cultivate this mood of, you know, I'm insignificant, you know. And whatever I accomplish in my devotional life, whatever uh, strength or whatever um, expertise that I have is due to my spiritual master, Prabhupada, Krishna, and also the mercy of the devotees. How do you express that in kirtan? Kirtan. Well, I can't sing, so you're asking the right <laughs> wrong person. Maybe someone would like to uh, comment on this? Or what did you have in mind? Wondering to get an answer. Okay. Yeah. Only if I can lead Kirtan, I'll tell you. you know. Well, yeah. you call out to Krishna, right? Mm -hmm. Balaram Prabhu says it's calling out to Krishna. Prabhu, can you use the microphone, Prabhu? No. <laughs> Balaram Prabhu said it's like a child crying out to its mother. We should have that uh, mood when we're, when we're doing kirtan. 
Well, two things come to mind. One is to sing a tune that is easy enough to follow. You know, that, that is, it's not some, because there are tunes and there are tunes. You know, some are, some are difficult to, to follow for, for people. So the, so the purpose, just like what was, what was Prabhupada's, you know, he was the, of course, the Acharya. And you hear those early kirtans, very simple tune, you know, the classic tune. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, what could be more simple than that? But that's the whole point, is that everyone could immediately learn it, and then chant it without worrying too much about the music and get into the mood of, the, of, the, of, of glorifying the holy name. That's one point. Uh, another one is for you know, those who are playing instruments to follow the leader. Sometimes you, know, you get excited and you start going faster and you're trying to pull the thing <laughs> along, you know. Rarely do, I, do we find draggers. It's usually... <laughs> So that's another point. And the other is the mood of, of uh, serving the holy name. Mm. You know, that's, that's, that's the thing. You're, serv you're serving the holy name and you're, you're, it's, it's being chanted personally for the pleasure of the Lord, you know, to, to try to remember that. Not to, not to, you know, get into a point where it's just uh, you're trying to show off kind of thing, yeah. you know, like that. There's a lot of subtleties to it. And I also heard there's a difference between kirtan and performance. <coughs> you know, yeah. You're gonna. You were wanting to say something, Victor. Um, so when I was in the temple in Maui, there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that have no idea about like the Hare Krishna movement, right? So they go there for the first time, and um, it's a little different than like the ISKCON temples, but still like Radha Krishna is a deity there. They're still chanting the holy names. Um, but people would go there expecting to see, like you just mentioned, a performance. And one of the days, um, the elder gentleman, who was like, he's like, we're not performers. We're not, you know, you're not coming here for a show or a concert. All we are are devotees, and we're trying to give you the holy names. So please don't come in here thinking <laughs> that, like, it's a performance. Please come in here knowing that we're serving you when mm. we sing. Yeah. Thank you. Every time I invite someone to the Christian lounge, I tell them, if you don't like the meditation, if you don't like the talk, you're going to like the food, you know. But it's nice that the devotees, they lead such nice kirtans that they get into it, you know. So they like the kirtan, they like the talk, and then they enjoy a wonderful uh, prasadam cooked by some Karshana Das Brahmachari. Okay. Um, Vijay Krishna Prabhu? Uh, yes, uh, Govardhan Prabhu, may I? Yes, please. Yes, uh, I see, uh, thank you very much, your most kind and about pronouns, Prabhu. I see in the beginning of the translation, and I quote, sober and expert persons should search for the spirit soul, unquote. Um, and uh, you know better than me that in, in Lord Chaitanya's movement, what is to be seen is that Lord Chaitanya um, is not uh, distributing his mercy only to the ones who are sober and expert. He, he is distributing his mercy even to the most fallen ones. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, based on all of this, my exact question is, why is it that Lord Chaitanya is uh, so liberal? And what will be the end result of Lord Ch Chaitanya being as liberal as he is? Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, isn't that uh, Lord Chaitanya is risking to create chaos uh, all around? <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most merciful and magnificent uh, personality because he didn't. He's not looking for a criteria or requirement to chant the holy name. He's giving it out freely. I'm reading uh, about Srinivas Acharya. He went to visit this devotee, Abhiram. And does anyone know what was special about this devotee? Abhiram? Yeah. He had a... He had a, a whip. <laughs> he had a whip. It was called uh, Jai Mangala. 
And anyone that was whipped by this, uh, that was hit by this whip, they would develop love of God. <laughs> yeah. So similarly, um, Krishna, he required surrender. Sarva Dharma and Parityaja. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's not asking anything. He says simply just chant. In this age of Kali, it's very difficult for people to take up spiritual life. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he opened this, uh, what did he call it? Storehouse? Uh, storehouse. Yeah, storehouse, yeah, of love of God. And so anyone in this world can take to just chanting Hare Krishna, unless they have a demoniac uh, nature. But anyone else, they can take the process of Krishna consciousness. They can take to devotional service by association with devotees and finding a bona fide spiritual master. So I think that is my answer, Vijay Krishna Prabhu. Yes, and you gave me a very, very beautiful answer, uh, Govardhan Prabhu. Thank you very much. You're most kind. Hare Krishna. My spiritual master, no. he said, uh, he narrated this story. Someone asked Srila Prabhupada, what happens if the whole world becomes Krishna consciousness? Prabhupada said, don't worry. There will always be fools like you who won't take, you know. So there, and by getting people to chant, it's not going to create uh, chaos, but it's going to create harmony, peace, and in this way we can understand the real goal of life, which is to go back home, back to Godhead. Okay. Is there someone else? Thank you so much, Prabhu Hare Krishna. Nice uh, discussion and uh, sharing uh, Mayapur's uh, past time and stories uh, with your, about your travel and Ravida Prabhu shared. Thank you so much. We want to hear more about your uh, yatra, maybe next class or something. Okay. That would be good. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Dhanavar Mataji. Yeah, my poor, um, sometimes it's <laughs> bewildering also. <laughs> You know, but I'll tell you about that next class. Okay, thank you for your time and attention. Grand Trashimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.